this wonderful evening. Jesus is Lord. I bless his name for all that he's doing. Now, I know your life is going to change. This evening, before I pray, we will be looking at very, very important subject today, and that is our commission. I consider this as a very special Bible study because the Spirit of God wants to speak to you heart to heart. Now, if you are a believer who is not committed in a church, this Bible study might not be for you. If you're not committed to a mentor, it might not be for you. If you don't have someone you report to that's responsible for your spiritual conduct, it might not be for you. See? If you're very busy to stay in one place and learn from the feet of Jesus, this Bible study might not be for you. If you are an opportunist, always looking for opportunity, this Bible study might not be for you. If you're someone who's failed in life and turned toward the work of ministry because of your failures, this Bible study might not be for you. The reason I outlisted all these, it is because this Bible study is about our commission given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. And this commission is only for disciples. It's not for those who are in disciples or those who assume they are disciples. I'm Edmund Sokwerede. You are connected to a special Bible study. I want to pray for you before we go for the break. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. I pray for the ears of my viewers. I pray for their minds. I pray for those who are listening over Tan Radio. I pray every religious cap, every religious cliches, bigotries, glasses, fashion in the spirit be removed. I speak your word into their lives, that their hearts are open. To receive your word. This wonderful special Bible study, Minister's Conference. I pray that my viewers will have a hearing ear, an understanding heart, and an open eyes. I pray for them. I pray for myself as the Spirit flow through me that I'm completely yielded to your Spirit as you speak to your children, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, precious name. Amen. 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 I prayed for you and I know the Lord heard me and I believe with all my heart. In the Bible study tonight, special Bible study, a wonderful minister's conference, you are going to learn who a true missionary is. You are going to learn how to accept the call of God. You're going to learn what it is to believe the scriptures. You're going to learn what it is to know Jesus. I'll be right back. Just this short break, I'll be back with a hot special Bible study. I'll be back. 
learn from him au te amri tanku thara sikha do i want to read for you today au ta aji amar mu apan man learn from him amukhin ho ever condition you are facing aji je konsi paristhiti amare samukhin ho chu i'm glad to say to you au je apan man koye pai chahanti jesus is the same today like he was in bible days au se je bangalore de aji ro din mot jesus se saman hotanti and he will touch you au se koye pai chahanti If you have sickness in your body jodi apan man karo sharir re asusthata achi he will heal it au se ta sustha karibe if you have doctor's report au jodi apan man karo doctor ko report roi chi he will change it au ta sa paribartan hoi chi jesus is the same aa jesus christ ho chanti se sada sada jesus jesus christ ko he will call all how se samasta ko swagat kar from every tribe आउ से प्रमस्त ट्राई एवरी काइंड ड्राइव समस्त गा का दोस्त प्रकृति रे जुवाली नाही हृदय रे भिन्न विषय से यीशु ख्रिस्ट सेटा रे अछि यू लर्न ऑफ हिम आउ यीशु को ठरा में सिखिबा यू डोंट डू पॉपुलर थिंग्स आउ से हमने जोटा की लोक मान कर प्रिय विषय न करिबा इन दैट बिग वे एवर योर चिल्ड्रन आर वेरेवर जो माने जो उठर वेरेवर दे, दे गो जोटा को जानतो ना काई दे गो विद योक आउ से मारे से जुवाली नहीं जिबे नो ड्रग्स कैन गेट ऑन देम आउ कोण सी जे निषाद द्रव्य तांको जीवन को जीवन है इगो कंपनी कैन गेट ऑन देम आउ मंदो सो ब्रंद बंधु जीव तांको जीवन कारण जीसस जीसु तांको सहित थि दे योक्ड आउ से जुवाली तांको सहित थिबो सिकनेस कैन नॉट आउ विथ आले be free in jesus name be healed amen walk in jesus name hallelujah 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 amen amen thank you thank you god thank you jesus i command go in jesus fire in the name of jesus christ go in jesus fire in the name of jesus christ. In the name of Jesus. Ah! Ah! In the name of Jesus. Amen. All over your body. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. I'll say Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My spirit is stopped. In the name of Jesus. This prayer you see today. Fire in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Stop it. Stop it. Don't move. Amen. See you again in ten more days. Learn from him. Aau te amari tan ko thara. This what I want to read for you today. Aau ta aji amar mu apan man ko learn from him. Aau ta han ko thara amari right mindset. The problem with the human race is not act. It's not act. It's not deeds. The problem with the human race is unseen mindset. Determine your life set. The set of your life is determined by your mindset. No civilization can overtake God's principles of success and wellness in life through his covenant secret of honoring parents. It's a covenant secret. To honor parents is what? A covenant secret. It's done for a purpose. Say it. More than marriage. More than marriage. More than the pleasures. More than the pleasures of this life. I was sent here. I was sent here on a mission. On a mission. I am setting out. I am setting out to discover that mission. Discover that mission. Straight talk with singles. The right mindset. We have to cooperate and allow the Holy Spirit minister to one another. Now, how? Let's. If that is tongue of the Holy Spirit, how come you're worrying? There must be two reasons why. One, your mind is not renewed by the Word of God, or those tongues that you receive, they are just—it's a gift. You know, we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say, "Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." Jesus said, "Ye shall receive when ye receive the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God comes on you, ye shall receive power."
Welcome back. Wonderful services. Wonderful materials you just saw. Amazing. This is a day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. The Lord is good. His mercies endures forever. Now, I have prayed for you. We are getting into this wonderful special Bible study. I love to call it Minister's Conference. Um, the reason why I feel in the spirit to get this special Bible study across to you is that uh, in the body of Christ, many believers, when they are supposed to be teachers, they are still struggling and they are still sitting in the pew or in the congregation receiving teachings from their wonderful pastor and leader, etc. The scripture tells us of Hebrews 5, that when we are supposed to be teachers, we do not need that men will teach us again. Now, when he said that, every church is given a syllabus. Every church is given timing. Every pastor is given equipment and time to use those equipment, divine equipment. So there is time slot in the work of the ministry. If you join a church for the first year, you understand that church, you understand the vision of that church, it should take you, if you're not an illiterate, it should take you about a month or two to understand that. Now, after understanding that, you're supposed to enter into service where is appropriate by the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing as I am not called to hold the microphone or I am not called to teach or I can't speak English like you, Pastor or uh, I am not the charismatic kind of a person. I just like to work behind the scene. All those things are beautiful. Those things are great. But where the Holy Spirit wants you to be, that's where you should be. A while ago, I was talking to someone, and they asked me, so you've been here all these years, as a year, and you've been in India, and you were born in Nigeria, southern Nigeria, yeah. And so uh, you have, uh, with all these many years, you have learned to love uh, the people here, you have learned to accept the way of life here, and all those things. When the conversation went there, it was very clear to me to answer I said, it was not time that made me love the people. It was not, excuse me, it was not the years that made me love the people. It was in time. It was in years. And it was in necessity. It was God's calling. He called me, sent me here. From day one, I loved the people. From day one, I understood the people. From day one, I am learning about the people. And I'm still learning about the people to serve them better. And the response was good when the conversation went that way. The response was good. And that's why I'm able to recall. Why? How will a minister respond to such questions? Uh, you're serving the people here. So you have come to love and know them over these years. No. Where the Lord sends, that's where we love. What he says, that's what we do. It's not feeling. It's not emotion. It's not choices. Paul said, I die daily. The Lord Jesus said that I see my father works I see my father work and I work. So he didn't say, I see my father work and I move with emotions and I work. 
one of the very dangerous things a leader can work with is being controlled by emotions. Never allow your emotion to control you. Never allow your emotions to determine what the Holy Spirit is saying. Let it be the other way around. Let the Holy Spirit determine what your emotions should say, should enjoy, etc. Tonight, from the presence of your father, my father, it's a sharp trumpet blowing sons and daughters of God. Hear my voice and take my heed. Take my instructions. Take my bidding. Now, we're going to start, like I told you earlier, from clearing the air of wrong assumptions. Now, <clears throat> you have to know that God has called you to serve him. If you are the Christian that says, I don't want to be a pastor, there's something wrong with your love for your shepherd. He said, but not all of us can be pastors now. At least some of us has to be financier. Some of us has to be soul winner. Some of us, some of us has to be evangelists and stuff like that. It's not you to say. It is the Holy Spirit to say. You are to say, yes, Lord, that is yours. Yours is, yes, Lord. Not uh, evangelist, and yours is, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. All right. To clear the air once more, if a believer is not committed in a church, the believer cannot do ministry. If the believer does ministry, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be very, very destructive. If a believer is not responsible or is not accountable to a leader, to a spiritual mentor, to a pastor, to someone watching their life who has the fear of the Lord, the scripture, and I recommend the person should be filled with the Holy Spirit. If a believer doesn't have someone accountable to someone that can shout at you, someone that can, that can rebuke you, and you keep quiet, and you will listen to the rebuke. If you don't have that kind of a person in your life, you, you, if you do ministry, it's going to be hazardous. It's going to be very terrible. If you take the call, without these very important ingredients. And the last, which is so, which is like the greatest, for a believer to answer the call of God, for a believer to heed the trumpet of the master, of the great commission, the believer must have two things, understanding and responsiveness to the understanding. We understand many things, but do we respond to it? So the believer must understand and be responsive to it. When I listened to my pastor years ago, I've been so blessed by my pastor. When I listened to him, it comes to a point in the sermon where I must I would have been so full. And in my heart I thought, Pastor, I want to go out now. I want to go out now. Why? I want to put to work what my pastor taught. When my pastor teaches, I never assume in any way that um, my pastor's uh, caste or tribe influenced his teaching. I never assume in, in any way because I saw the Holy Spirit in his life. If you are answering the call of God upon your life, it's very important for you to be responsive to your understanding. Respond.
respond to what you understand. Respond to what you understand. If the scripture teaches about purity, respond when you understood it. Or when you understand it, respond to it. It's very important. Now, having cleared this, I want to show you what some of you might not know or what you may know but you throw down the drain of your maybe carelessness or some kind of attitude that's not helping God's call upon your life. We all were called from our mother's womb. Every one of us were called from our mother's womb. I wish I could say this a thousand times in all the churches around the world. Every one of us were called from our mother's womb. God gave a plan. God gave a strategy in which we can be built up to answer that call. The Holy Spirit will determine where you will function. You cannot choose an office. When I was much a younger Christian, I used to love to be a pastor. When I became a pastor, I couldn't wait to run back to the call which God gave me, the apostolic call, to do his work. And I'm sitting here today and giving this special Bible study, this is the apostolic sound of my calling. God wants you to understand the commission he's given to you. That's why he made you see this special Bible study tonight. God wants you to respond to it. When you understand it, respond to it. So, the commission. The commission. Let us look at the commission. Matthew chapter number 28. Okay? Matthew chapter number 28. I'm reading the Naz translation. But you will have the King James translation displayed. Okay, let me read the King James so that I can move on. Uh, along with you thank you Holy Spirit for your presence hallelujah are you enjoying this I am thank you Holy Spirit okay um, Matthew's gospel chapter number 28 verse number 19 now in verse number 18 the Lord said all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth in verse number 19 he said go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you all the way even unto the end of the world amen hallelujah now here we see he says go to all the world and teach all nature nations teach all nations this is where I and my agape got the tan project from many years ago when I saw this I saw teach all nations. I didn't know in another translation it would say disciple all nations. I didn't know I grew up with King James. I was a King James I was a child of King James. Now many of us are who who, who raised by wonderful people. Now uh, I grew up and, and and I didn't know it meant disciples, make disciples of all nations. I didn't know other translations are there. I felt this was the only word Jesus spoke. Teach all nations. And that's where I got the acronym from. T-A-N. TAN. And now we've got the TAN TV, the TAN radio, the TAN project. My life today and the ministry that we have today and myself, Adi, my children and all the signs and wonders we are today accomplishing the time project teach all nations God will give you vision as you are listening God will strike your heart as you are listening God will increase the volume 
of attentiveness and the voice of the Spirit in you as you are listening. I remember going to a conference, and the man of God said to us, Now pray, God is going to give you a vision. When I prayed, the first thing I saw was Dan Radio. And immediately, I'm talking to you about the year 2001, 2001. The first thing I saw was Tan Radio. Tan Radio. Now, this is almost, I mean, so many years ago. And I took that document, went to the office, typed that thing down. I created what I was seeing. And I started to inquire how to open a local radio. I started to gather all the information how to open a local radio. The place where I was at, at that time, they weren't giving licenses to gospel local radios. And there were no, I think there were one or none at all, internet radios. Until somewhere 2017, we opened Tan Radio. Saints, this is your call. How are you going to answer it? You cannot say, I'm not called to be a pastor. It's too late. In the kingdom of God, we are called kings and priests. You cannot be scared to be a pastor as well. Pastor, I see what you go through. I, I, I don't want to imagine myself being a pastor. Well, if I have given you wrong examples, I'm sorry for that. But you should not feel scared to be what God has called you to be. If man is making you, you can be scared. But if God is calling you, fear not. Do what he says. It doesn't matter how many imperfections you think you have. Submit to the will of God. Now, I want you to look into the very important aspect of transformation. For you as a disciple, you must experience a transformation of God's word for you to be able to be used of the Lord. You have to be transformed. You cannot postpone your transformation. All right, I'm trying to make this quick as much as as much as I can so first transformation you cannot lead anyone to Christ until you are led to Christ you cannot make anyone experience Christ until you experience Christ you cannot experience people walking away from their sins until you walk away from your sins for you to be a channel of light, you have to be light. For you to be a channel of the water that people drink and they'll never thirst again, you have to drink of that water, Jesus Christ, and never thirst again. And you become a channel of that flowing rivers of living water to the ends of the earth, to a dry world, to a hurting world, and people drink of that water of Jesus Christ and they don't, test, they don't thirst again. You must be what God wants you to be so that you can reach out to the people the way he wants you to. Now, some of us are still doubting. For your sakes, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. When I read those scriptures, I'm going to come and explain to you how you are a missionary through this commission. Bible scholars call this the Great Commission. So true. The Great Commission. It is the Great Commission. The tasks that is given to us. The job description is given to us. Disciple all nations. Disciple all nations. He didn't call us to solve problems, even though the gospel solved problems. He didn't call us to pray for the sick, even though the gospel, you cannot preach it without praying for the sick. He called us to disciple nations. He called us to teach all nations. He called us to bring the kingdom of heaven 
mentality to the kingdoms of the earth. And then the scripture says in the book of Revelation, then the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me try to read these verses to you. In, in Matthew chapter number 5, I've said it earlier on, the scripture says, you are the light of the world. Light shines. So when you go to church, the people that are in the church, most of them are lights. You have to come to the responsible place that your light should shine out, outside the church. Now, what I mean is about your calling. What God is calling you to do. What God is asking you to do. How long will you postpone it? How long will you wait? Some are waiting and praying and waiting and praying. When God speaks to me, I'll go. God is speaking to you. Go ye into all nations. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. That was what I read and responded to. And I saw amazing things the Lord did. It's your turn. How long are you, are you going to be there? Do you want someone to come and tell you? See, you've been in this church for all 10 years. What is there in your life? You have to start your own church. You want someone to come and tell you that? Wake up to the responsibility the Lord has given to you. Take it up. Answer the call. For those of you who still have some things, I've told you you are light of the world. That's Matthew chapter number 5. And light will shine. Yes, Pastor, I can shine in my home. I can shine among my neighbors. I, I can shine in my workplace. I don't need to be a pastor. I, I don't need to be a minister of God to shine now, nah, Pastor. Yes. You don't need to be a minister of God to shine. But you don't know that you're already a minister of God. You are a minister of God. You are a priest. Yes, Pastor, I believe that. But I'm not comfortable with the microphone. Don't say that. Let the Holy Spirit say it. I can't speak like you. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. So, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, it says, These, sign, these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe? He said, in my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall pick up serpents and it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said that in the book of Mark. Are you a believer? He's talking to you. Now, you go further. You go further. Let's, let me read for you, for some of you who are still struggling with this. Galatians chapter number 1. When I saw this verse, my life changed. Galatians chapter number 1, verse 15. The scripture says... But when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now, understand, this is the Apostle Paul talking here. God separated him from his mother's womb. Didn't you know what the Apostle Paul did? He wasn't a baby. He wasn't 17 years old when he did those things. When he persecuted the church, treated the church terribly. He wasn't 17 years old. He was a grown man when he did that. Yet, he said, from his mother's womb, God separated him for what? Called by his grace. 
To do what? Verse 16. To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Okay, Pastor. I think what you're saying is, is correct. Uh, I think I have to go to join uh, Bible school. Look at what he said. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. I didn't go to meet someone to train me. I didn't go to meet someone to teach me how to preach Jesus. Now there's so many, um, there's so many school of thoughts there. But let me just give you two. One, let's, give, let's take the layman's school of thought. The layman's school of thought here is, I did not take any kind of uh, formal teaching from anyone, but what God gave to me, but that I went and saw the apostles. Now, order, like I told you, you must be accountable to someone. Paul was accountable to the apostles. Paul was accountable to the apostles. We talk about independent ministry. Independent ministry really doesn't exist. Independent ministry could be, as it has to be, legal connections with other bigger organization ministries. You are not connected with them. Is that understood? But we have to be accountable. Paul was accountable to the apostles. So... It says, to reveal his son in me. Now, before I go on, I want to explain to you two types of missionaries. Let's look at the old missionaries. Because here, the scripture told us that Paul was separated from his mother's womb. Okay? Paul was separated from his mother's womb. Paul was separated from his mother's womb. I'll share the back here. You? Uh, Pastor, uh, I don't know. I tell you, you are separated from your mother's womb. I accepted the call before I became 20 years, and now I'm 42. I accepted the call before I became 20. And everything I saw was to serve him. Everything I wanted was to serve him. I wasn't looking for a gain or to get a name. I wasn't looking for settlement in my life. I was born in a settled family. I wasn't looking for, I was not looking for some vain thing. Ensure your heart is not looking for vain things. Otherwise you'll get it. You'll get those vain things and you'll miss God. Those days, they used to think a missionary is someone who goes to this old place and he wants to work for the Lord, stays in his hurt, and goes through all these things and all the stuff. Olden days. Now, I believe for real those missionaries of old, I respect them. I love them. I thank God that they came to Africa and around the world obeying the call of God. Today's missionary is different. Today's missionary, we use technology. Today's missionary, we use the media. Today's missionary, we use um, we use angelic our uh, we use a different uh, I, I, I need to explain this to you we use the messenger the messenger we use we use publications we use ministry materials ministry materials for today's ministry we use ministry materials publication books magazines and you name it, blog, we write. Yeah, Pastor, that is my problem. I don't know how to write. Don't bother about that. Answer the call. Answer the call. And so, old time missionary versus new time missionary, I've told you. 
put the two together you can see those pictures that were shown to you put the two together and you will see that both of them are true missionaries but what time are you you are in today's time you have to function as today's missionary You have to function as the missionaries of Christ. The Christian missionary were sent. This commission sent us. Okay. From the mother's womb. Now if you have questions, you know what to do. The details will be displayed on the screen to send your questions. And I will be glad to answer them your questions I will be glad to answer them if you if you the details are on the screen mobile number is right there on the screen you can send your questions there and I'll answer it if I get it before the live special Bible study is over I'll answer it otherwise I would answer it to your email or to your mobile number in Galatians 5 1 he says before from my mother's womb he called me and Paul didn't respond to the call for a long time it doesn't mean God didn't call him in Jeremiah 1 Jeremiah started to say his profile was given and from 5 and 6 he started to say that Lord I'm a child and the Lord said don't say you are a child and the Lord touched his lips, anointed his lips. You know, one of the very important things that God wants to touch in your life, to use you, is your spirit and your lips, your tongue. Your spirit. Don't use that tongue anyhow. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Jeremiah 1, 5 and 6 God changed Jeremiah and filled him. Gideon was a scared man. He was the smallest in his family. His family was the smallest in Israel. And Israel was one of the smallest in the world. Now, when we look to that same scripture, how it played out. God changed Gideon. Used Gideon. The same thing with Moses. Moses said, I can't speak. God said, who makes a man's mouth? So, you look at these and you know that accepting the commission is not a negotiation. You have to accept the commission. Pastor, I need to grow. How many years have you been in that church? You need to grow. Grow to where? Grow to become what? We have, in God's call, we have timing. You come in. You learn about the life of God. You learn about what you've received. Immediately, you start to use it. When, where are you growing? Where will you grow to? Understand the scriptures and respond to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So accept his commission. We are his messengers. His body, his disciples, his own brothers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Over and over again, many people with wrong motives were seen in the gospel. Simon, the one who was there in the book of Acts, Provided, gave money to the apostles that he wants to receive the Holy Spirit. The apostle says, your money will perish with you. Check your motive for serving God. Check your motive for accepting the call. 
check your motive. Your motives must be clear to you. You know what's the clear motive? It's not to accomplish something. The clear motive is souls. God wants to win the souls. God wants to save the souls which he paid for. That's the motive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the scripture tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 22, verse 14, many are called, but few are chosen. Why few are chosen? Few are not chosen by God. Many are called by God. Few are chosen. I know some of you say by the Holy Spirit. Wait. Many are called by God. Few are chosen by themselves. I know this sounds very, very funny, but it's the truth. When you respond, you will hear God. When you say yes, the way we res react, the way will react to you. It will respond to you. Say yes today. Say yes today. In First Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 26 to 29, the scripture says, Not many noble, not many kings, not many high-placed people are called. Because they feel they are too big for God. Some people feel what I'm doing is childish. Some people feel serving God is religious. Now, some people come with this problem. Pastor, I believe all what you're saying. But the problem is, if I serve God, I cannot pay my bills. I cannot be financially strong. Who told you that? Who told you you cannot pay your bills, you cannot be financially strong? First of all, those folks who feel you have to leave everything to serve God, they are extreme in their response to the call of God. You don't need to sell everything to follow God. When we walk with God, the scripture tells us it is from glory to glory, from faith to faith. So we don't walk with God and just jump to the, glo to the highest glory. It's from glory to glory, from faith to faith. So from where you are, you respond to the call of God. You're an engineer. From where you are, you respond to the call of God, a doctor, surgeon. From where you are, you respond to the call of God and leave the rest for him. He will do it much better than you can ever plan it to do it. See? And people postpone. Okay, Pastor, when I finish my uh, PG exams or when I finish my PhD or when I finish my this, when I finish that, when I get married, ah, Pastor, when I get married, I'll be two. No, now I'm one, Pastor. When I get married, I'll be two. So two strength for the Lord. So we will, we will, we will, uh, we will answer the call of God, Pastor. Any excuse you give to the Lord, you act like you are related to Jonah. And God handled Jonah. He knows how to handle you. Do you want God to handle you like Jonah? Do you want to pray from a fish belly of your situation? Do you want your situation to swallow you like a fish? And then you say, Lord, okay, I understand now. Everything is showing me that you're calling me. Yes, Lord. Okay, Pastor, I have only seven years in my service. Let me just finish the seven years and then I'll retire. I'll serve the Lord. No. Serve the Lord now while you have life. Pastor, should I leave my job? The Lord didn't say you should leave your job. Respond to his call. Respond to his call. Respond to his call. Oh, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you tonight. I told my children, 
from your mother's womb you were sold out for the gospel. My daughter thought of that. Sold out? I said, yes. Then the other day we were driving past the airport and um, a plane took off and I said, hey, sweetie, see that? And they saw it and we started to talk about uh, the pilot, the life of a pilot, the dividends of a pilot and stuff like that. And suddenly my daughter said, Daddy, I love to be a pilot. <laughs> I said, great, <laughs> you can be a pilot. Then the other one said, really? The, the elder one said, really? How is it possible for you to be a pilot? I thought we should only serve God and preach the word of God. That's it. You told us that we're sold out to the Lord. I said, you're sold out for the Lord. It doesn't mean that you cannot be a blessing in this world. Study and do some wonderful thing in this world. It doesn't mean that. You can do that and serve the Lord at the same time. Hallelujah. So, brother, you don't need to wait for seven years for your service period to be over civil servant. You are servant of the Most High. Answer the call. Souls are waiting. Answer the call. I have a beautiful materials for you. If you would write or if you would speak to me, I have beautiful materials for you. The first, first starter is the minister. One of my first uh, instructional book, which is not released, the minister. You know the do's and don'ts and you know what it is to work and do ministry or what is full-time ministry, what does the scripture speak about full-time ministry. What does the scripture teach us about it? You, all these things you will know. Now, I intend for this Bible study to be short, and I think that has been broken off. I think um, I couldn't keep that. But I feel the Spirit of God right now has given you very valuable information, and one that you shouldn't forget. Today is the day of salvation. Don't say tomorrow you will serve the Lord. The Lord one day called a very handsome young man, successful man. He says, come, follow me. Before he said that, he told him, go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. He was sad because he had great possessions. Some of you have great possessions. Some of you have great bank balance. Maybe that's why you are not able to answer the call. But you will not always have such a special Bible study to remind you of God's calling upon your life. Before you were born, you were separated from your mother's womb. While I was in my mother's womb, my mother was kidnapped. Some of you know the story. Taken by these kidnappers in Africa. And they were taking them to go and do some ritual or something. Meaning offering to gods. My mother was going to be killed. She entered into a taxi thinking she's going home. Not knowing that these are band of kidnappers. And while I was in my mother's womb, she was, she was kidnapped. Both of us were kidnapped. I didn't know my right from my left. I, don't, I didn't even know what it is to cry. Because I was in the womb. My mother told me the story. And I'm so touched by it. And God saved us. Today I'm alive. My mother is alive. Glory to God. They opened that thing through her out. Some of you know the story. Wonderful story. I was kept to reveal the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That is our ultimate ministry calling 
purpose. That is our greatest purpose. Doesn't matter what you do, that's our greatest purpose. Will you answer that call? The call of God. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray for everyone who are listening right now from Tan Radio and from all our social networks. They have struggled with this. They have thought of it. They were scared of it. So many situations. I pray, Father, that you open their eyes. I pray, Father, that you open their heart to accept the call of God upon their lives. Souls are out there that we need to reach and disciple for the Lord. Stand up, receive the Holy Spirit, and say, yes, Master, I will go. I will go. I will go. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, fill them with your spirit. Help them to understand they have one greatest destiny, and that is the destiny of light. The destiny of light. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus precious name. Amen. 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 It's wonderful. It is wonderful. I would like to help you. I would like to help you discover what God has called you to do. I would like to help you discover what in your church you should get to your pastor Speak to your pastor. Don't go by feelings. Go by our commission. Our commission. This is our commission. Don't go by feelings. Go by the commission. Love and mercy. You know the Lord has called you. I'm here to help you to accomplish God's call upon your life. Accept that call. Do not be scared. Accept that call. Accept that call. I'm here to help you. You can talk to me. You can write to me. You can call me on phone. You can visit if you have to and speak about God's call don't sit when you're supposed to be standing don't stand when you're supposed to be running do not run when you're supposed to be flying there are time slots in our walk with God be sensitive to it and let your life honor his majesty Thank you for connecting to this special Bible study. I look forward to have this wonderful kind of Bible study, but the Lord doesn't give me every time. Thank you for being part of it, to give your support to the ministry. The, in, the information is right on the screen to give your support to the ministry. 
to partner with us, you want to partner with us, the information is on the screen. Any kind of partnership. God bless you. And I pray for you as you step into this new month. In the name of Jesus, that fire of the Holy Spirit will burn in you. The fire of the Holy Spirit will burn in you. It will burn this month as you step into. May the fire of the Holy Spirit burn in you. Fire of prayer. Fire of prayer. May the Lord use you, hallelujah, to keep many from going into destruction by your prayer. May the Lord use you to bring peace to your family by your prayer. May the Lord use you in your job by your prayer. May the Lord use you before your children by your prayer. In your, in your academics, in your relationship by your prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Your seeds that you sow will multiply. And God bless you and increase you. I wish we'd be having such wonderful ministers' conference often as the Lord wills. Thank you for connecting tonight. Jesus is Lord. Satisfy the human heart. Money cannot satisfy the human heart. Pleasure cannot satisfy the human heart. Comfort cannot satisfy the human heart. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human heart. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. God's Word made flesh. And He walked the earth. And He faced the things that we're facing, passed through the difficulties that we passed through, and was without sin, the Bible says. He was without sin. He was a sinless. The seed of God's word became flesh. And he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus. You can call upon that name wherever you are and you can be saved today. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying this prayer. O Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me. I am a new creation. Hallelujah. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations. You are now a child of God. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please get in touch with us by calling any of the numbers displayed on your screen or visit our website. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human.